ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turpan, the Mars of <laughs> China. This river is fed by glaciers from the Tian Shan Mountains. On the way to see the Bezek Lake Southern Plus Cape with our gentleman and our beautiful lady. Okay? <laughs> this is a movie set. We're not allowed to stop, but we're having a Discreet the little nice look. Coffee. The monkey kings are there. These are the uh, structures for drying the bunches of grapes. So the bunches hang inside these little buildings and uh, the breeze blows through the openings. And this is how they get the green raisins. It takes about two weeks. Other grapes are just air dried like these, but of course they will become brown. And there you can see the drying racks. And this is very gorgeous open museum. You, uh, on your right side over there, it's all the uh, Tianshan Mountain and the Fleming Mountain. And at that part you can see the grottoes over there. And now we are... In the distance you can see the burial caves dug into the mountainsides. At the end of the gorge is the village of Toyug that we're going to visit now. We can see the Persian Islamic influence in this architecture. Look at all the different colors of the earth. We're now at the Tianshan Canyon area. This is where a lot of the mummies that we're going to see soon were found. They were buried underground in coffins and they were actually naturally mummified without oils and bandages. These are the Astana tombs. 
this morning we're going to see the ruined city of Zhao which means where the two rivers meet. The ancient city is 1.7 kilometers long and about half a kilometer wide. It's actually all been carved out. Thought. This is called wild watermelon, typical desert plant. It's about the only thing that can survive here. Its roots go down 60 to 80 meters. The camels can eat it to sustain themselves. This is called wild watermelon, typical desert plant. It's about the only thing that can survive here. Its roots go down 60 to 80 meters. The camels can eat it to sustain themselves. Here we can see how the city has actually been mostly carved out of the site. Those trees in the background, that's where the river is. So we're looking at a, a height of about 14 meters. very desirable fortress. The one a lot of people after the other came here as conquerors, destroyers, but by the end of the 14th century the whole city was abandoned. The whole city had only two gates, of which this is the East Gate. This was one of the residential areas of the complex. And this is the largest temple of the complex. This could almost be the Silk Road. One is like uh, eating something, one is drinking something, one is sitting, yeah. one is peeing. Uh, right, so, yeah. this one to tell us about the story is like life is. The main thing is this four thing. You don't have to worry or angry about anything. No big deal. <laughs> We're now going to visit the largest mosque in Turpan. The mosque and the minaret are built of adobe of clay and straw. This whole complex is made of mud, in other words, adobe and wood. This is a Uyghur graveyard of the nobility. Now each one of the tombstones is a different shape because tradition here is that you don't write the name of the dead person. And what a feast we're having. It's good, Ali. Really? It's good, eh? Mm. This must be one of the largest fans in the world. Maybe the Titanic fan. There we go. Well, when it's nearly hitting 40 degrees, that's what you do. Tulu fan putao, chi putao, mi zao putao fi. Great. No puto. No puto. Yes. <laughs> they are seedless raisins, so there's no pip inside. Brilliant. Well done, guys. Up. 
Not bad for a hotel. Absolutely marvellous. This is the Tumaris Hotel in Urum Chi. In the lobby, there are these two traditional Uyghur instruments, like gigantic double basses. And of course, we're about to have dinner.